Welcome to TTP, Turnbuckle Talk Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Dirty Blondes. Dirty Blondes is a bar located in the heart of Blackpool, famous for their banging tunes, cocktails and 18-inch pizzas. The only place to get pizza as big as your table across the bad coast. If you're ever in Blackpool, check them out. They're on Facebook and on Instagram. That's Dirty Blondes Blackpool. Welcome to TTP, Temporal Talk Podcast. I'm joined by half man, half iron brute. It is the Scottish stud, Mr. John <laughs> Dugan. All right, how are you? Looking really colourful today. Well, you know, we've got to bring it off a bit. <laughs> um, today we've got a special guest. Um, he is currently at PCW. Um, he's a man of many talents, which we're going to get into uh, in this interview. Uh, Rossi Rascal. How's it going? You okay, guys? How are you doing? Yeah, good, good. Really well, thank you. Really good. Hoping the same for you. If I knew it was a bright T-shirt contest, I would have brought mine, but a bit late <laughs> for that right now. To be honest, I didn't get the memo either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just what happens. These things no, it looks happen, good, man. It looks good. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's let's get straight into it. Rossi, uh, Rossi Rascal. Um, so you originally um, got into... Well, martial arts and judo from when yeah. he was young. Um, me and John don't know too much about judo, to be honest, but I believe you're a second Dan. I am, I am, yeah. Um, um, judo, uh, I got into it by accident. So I got into judo by accident, and it's it's pretty cool that we've made it this far, but it was all, everything just revolved full circle around wrestling. So I got into judo for wrestling, and fortunately it's paid off because it's gifted me a persona, and it's gifted me a character, and uh, the judo allows me to keep myself safe and others safe, so it's just all full circle. So, yeah, the judo's done well for me. Yeah, how hard is it to be a second dan? Like, is it a lot of work? I mean, uh, it's quite high up a second dan. I appreciate that. Um, to if you're going down the fighting path or the competitive pathway to get your first stand, you need to win five fights in a day, uh, with three of them yeah. being back to back with no rest. So it's, it's a pretty prestige honour to have a, a Dan grade, a competitive Dan grade in judo. So, yeah, I'm just having nightmares of them five fights in one day. That's pretty damn... That's impressive, but, yeah, it was a long mm. time. <laughs> um, how long did you do judo for to get to that point? Um, I started at 14, so in judo, that's quite late, to be honest. Uh, mm. Obviously, most people tend to start around, you know, younger than that five six seven i got into it as a 14 year old uh i was very uh, overweight as well i was very you know i was an obese kid if you will so judo to me just gave me everything from a better fitness health perspective confidence it gave me everything that i needed and i can't remember at the top of my head i think it took me six maybe yeah i think six years to get to uh dan grade but that was training literally every day you know twice a day so it wasn't a walk in the park or just to show up and hope for the best. It was a lot of lot of effort, a lot of competitions and a lot of hard work as well went into that. How did wrestling take you to judo, like you said? It did. So I wanted to be a wrestler and this was back in a time where, like, obviously, if you're under 16, it was quite rare to find a school. So mm. I plucked up the courage again. Remember, I'm overweight. I have no confidence. But I eventually plucked up the courage and seeked out a local wrestler. And he told me again, I was too young. Um, I was 13 at the time, 14. So he says, you're too young, pal. Uh, do judo. And he sent me to this club. And like you guys, I knew nothing about judo. Nothing at all. <laughs> so I've shown up, hope for the best, thinking it was karate chops and, you know, chopping wood or whatever you want to call it. But... <laughs> And that's what it was. And so <laughs> I turned up, I took to it. I absolutely adored it. And the club uh, is the same club I'm with now. And they've just given me everything from uh, opportunity. Uh, again, they just saw a, a kid that was out of shape. But they saw potential and they gave me that platform that I needed. So judo gave me much more than just a black belt and much more than just an activity, if you will. Did you ever want to kind of go into... Um, the Olympics are kind of, you know, take judo to the next step? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, no, and the reason is I respect, yes, I train, I consider myself that trains very hard, but 
I respect that being a full-time judo player is is literally a full-on lifestyle choice. It's not a lifestyle that I wish to uh, pursue, to be honest. But uh, to be an Olympian in judo, they're absolutely terrors on the mat. You know, I've sparred Olympians and they're absolutely next level. But it's not something I ever wanted to pursue, to be honest. Um, I'm at the point, obviously, we can talk more about it and discuss more. But as a competitor in judo, I'm actually uh, done. Um, I'm, I'm very happy, very satisfied that I've achieved and accomplished everything I wanted to as a competitor. And I'm obviously starting new chapters as a coach and obviously now wrestling being my main uh, my main passion, my main love. Just before we do get into wrestling, you did some MMA as well, like um, fighting in, in the cage, in the octagon. Um, <laughs> how was that? Because, I mean, that must have been quite a step up from, well, quite a different um fighting style to judo it was uh yeah of course it is um it was more that was my day off from judo so <laughs> sometimes <laughs> when judo competitions kind of you know quieten i jump into a boxing ring i jump into a cage or i do a brazilian comp um there's loads of reasons for it there was one to have no regrets i wanted to you know oh, i wonder what it would be like to experience this so it was more the experience there was a little bit of ego there in terms of kind of judo guy, you know, throw hands, throw kicks, hold his own and things. So it was more of just a, I've got nothing to do. I'm bored. I need something to keep me competitive. Yeah, yeah. I'm competitive at the end of the day and I love competing. <laughs> I love uh, two guys having a date in terms of we know what date it is. We know how long we've got to prepare. We shake hands and it's the best man wins, whether it's win, draw or lose. I can, I'm a very, very competitive guy but I know how to lose as well I'm very respectful in losing and that's that's what it's down to it's just the competitive nature it's just that that itch so when there's no judo I'll jump into a cage or jump into a ring no problem how did you do in the uh, in the octagon <laughs> I've won uh, I've only been in there twice uh, and that's okay. enough for me to be honest I don't like getting hit in the face it's not a pleasant feeling <laughs> but, uh, I won uh, both occasions by submission Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was very confident in, in my ground, obviously, from the judo background. So as soon as it went to ground, I just, yeah, I felt that was it. Happy yeah, because you could have gone a CM Punk kind of way and just... <laughs> 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 I could have all the hype and, yeah, all the hype and no idea. But Punk, again, every credit to him, it takes... I don't know if you guys have done anything like boxing or cage fighting or, or anything <laughs> in that respect, but mm. it takes a ton of something to... Yeah, uh, what, I can imagine. what level, whether it be a white collar, an amateur, or obviously a professional level, it just takes either a crazy person or a very, very brave individual. So I have respect for anybody, including CM Punk. Um, mm. I took a lot of inspiration from that, to be honest. Uh, okay. yeah, I, I thought you wanted to speak. No, go on. Um, to get into wrestling, uh, so that was always your goal to finally. When I stood on getting to wrestling, so how did you get into wrestling after that? I, I, it kind of it happened right place, right time. So I don't really know. There's like different parts in the story that don't really make sense. But when I was ten, <laughs> that's when I decided I wanted to be a wrestler. And again, it goes down the cliche route of you know no one knowing. I go to careers advisors and they wouldn't have a clue. I ask mm. teachers wrestling they say get a real job or have something realistic it's all the cliche stuff um but i knew deep down i always wanted to be a, a professional wrestler for whatever reason whether it was the the entertainment perspective or just obviously enjoying it as a kid so the judo i kind of took over obviously i started to enjoy that and do really well in that and then i had obviously my career in fitness as well but we'll fast forward and i'll cut out all the little bits and pieces here it's to pcw I had a friend that did the white collar program and I wanted to go support him. And this was a time where I kind of wasn't really watching wrestling anymore. I was kind of like, yeah, cool. And he inspired me big time because he's just stepped into the ring. He was in the ring with Big T as well. And just to, to witness that, my poor friend getting absolutely battered. <laughs> just shown so much and he was doing it for charity. And, you know, it's a huge platform. So it inspired me to sign up for white collar too. And... I thought going into wrestling, no matter what level, I got it all wrong, to be honest. I thought it was going to be like survival of the fittest, dog eat dog. And to be honest, guys, I've never been in such a more supportive environment. 
Uh, so that's hats off to the wrestlers that obviously PPW is a company. It's just such a very supportive uh, platform and atmosphere. So I did white collar too. And my expectations or goals was just to do that and then say, yes, I've experienced being a wrestler. Like I've experienced a cage, you know, just get a taste of everything. Um, so I did white collar too. And again, everyone was lovely. We had a, what I believe was a great match. But if I watched it back, I don't dare. <laughs> it was, I to me it was like Wrestlemania but it was probably the most I don't even dare watch it back it was probably, <laughs> all I knew is I could take a bump you know from the judo so obviously they gave me a bit of a, a cool uh, match but I finished that uh, went back into judo competed and then it was just growing on me how I was missing everything because it went from your highest of your high and then suddenly it's all gone so um, mm. I kind of just did bit here, bit there, and then I signed up to another white collar. And again, expecting that to be my last one, and then that was it. Um, I did white collar, I think it was four, and they called me back and said, we want to throw you into the, the rumble on the main show. And I thought, wow, these are pretty cool things. Again, expecting that to be my last appearance. And I thought, well, I appreciate the opportunity, guys. I'll definitely do the rumble. That's huge. Um, and then I was expected just to be like, kind of forgotten about or thank you kid you know you filled the space mm -hmm. and then the rest just catapulted from there so that's pretty much how I got into it and then obviously there's more of the story as we unfold later <laughs> yeah, what was pretty... your um, wrestling song as you came into the white collar my wrestling song yeah what'd you pick it was, it was song two by blur yeah good one yeah yeah I know yeah I know you guys would appreciate that <laughs> It was, no, yeah, I, I was it, torn between yeah. two songs. There was a reason. I wanted it to be a song people could recognise, but a song that I could kind of get me in the mood, if you know what I mean. Mm. So it was either that or Walking on Sunshine by Katrina and the Waves. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah, know, a lot of people have... Um, who is it? Is it Grado? He has um, Madonna. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It works, it works, but I, I think I made the right choice, to be honest, guys. Yeah. So how much training did you get for that? Or did they just throw you in the deep end, or did they give you a sort of basic sort of thing to yeah, do? Yeah, so in terms of the white collar, obviously, that was, it's your basic of your basic. It's just keep yourself safe and don't do anything silly. But the judo, again, has given me so much. Judo has learned, again, how to protect myself, all, all the breakfalls, the rolls the athleticism, but also to keep others safe. Because again, I'm coaching judo. We don't want people to get hurt. So it kind of gave me a bit more of a head start, if you will. But in terms of the rumble, I had, again, they were very professional. I had people telling me or training me how to, you know, do a few more things safely from a, an in-ring perspective. So it all just happened quite fast, but they were all very, you know, supportive. My rumble appearance was about a minute. So I, <laughs> I didn't need much. I didn't need much, and then uh, we obviously just went straight into the academy, and now just again, as I'm very proudly always do, just train my backside off, uh, train smart, train hard. And PCW, so that's a that's a stone way from from Blackpool where we're from, and PCW because of them, I've seen so many good wrestlers. Like it's such a good brand. Like I remember seeing Ryback when he came wow. out of WWE. He was at um, he came to PCW. We've seen Scotty do hotly, didn't we? Mm. I mean, there's so many good wrestlers. I, I absolutely love PCW. Um, I used to always go watch them in, in Preston. Um, and how, how have you, was you like a fan of PCW beforehand? I was. Uh, I still am. I still am. Uh, that's why I appreciate talking to you guys, being Blackpool lads. You know, we've got a lot in common. We're passionate about our town. <laughs> But um, Preston and obviously uh, Stephen Flood and that, they're passionate about Preston and they're passionate about mm. excellence. So it's just two passions together. But yeah, I was I was a, a huge PCW fan. I'm a, a more of a fan of British wrestling as opposed to any other type of wrestling. I think yeah. the stories just, you know, relate to me better and captivate me better. So PCW, to answer your question, yeah, absolutely. I was a, a, I'm a huge fan, still am. And there's still times where I'm kind of in awe because it's the whole idols become rivals thing, you know. I'm mean, <laughs> like I used to, you know, idolise. I'm not going to name drop them or anything, but yeah, it's quite surreal to me at times. Still is. Yeah, and it's it's come up to ten years of PCW. 
Yeah, 10 years. Um, it's going to be exciting. There's a few things that I know, a few things that I don't know, but obviously going to keep... Any, any spoilers? No. It was worth a shot. No, as soon as, <laughs> as soon as things get announced, you'll know. But trust me, guys, it's something you want to jump on. Uh, if you know anybody that's a fan of wrestling but not familiar with PCW, encourage them just to get a, you know, a bit of a head start now, guys, because we've got some really cool things planned for this year. Uh, more importantly, the passion. And what this last year has given us is people now know exactly what they want. Do they want to actually wrestle or do they want to find new things? So everybody you're going to see on every show genuinely wants to be there mm -hmm. and they genuinely want to do well for themselves, for their peers and for the company. So it's going to be exciting, not just for PCW, but for British wrestlers as a whole. It's, it's, it's going to be a hell of a year, guys. Ten years as well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's going to be exciting. Proud it's, of. <laughs> it's so good as well to have British wrestling back on TV. Because PCW is now on um, two Sky channels. Yes. So they're on Sporty Stuff TV and uh, the Showcase channel. You got it. I've got it written down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um, I seen it advertised and I was like, I'm, get I'm getting on this because British wrestling needs to be back on TV. Yeah. Um, so. so I've got it on series link and everything. And I watched the one the other night of um, on Showcase TV, you know, the Royal Rumble from... 2014 i believe oh, wow and uh yeah it's just a great show uh it is it is it's just a good atmosphere it really the pcw again it's just such a really we've got a, such a, and i've witnessed this firsthand because i'm still a rookie in my career but it's mm. more the, the the fan base or the support that we're receiving is the beautiful thing about our fans is they recognise who, say, an, an academy trainee, and they recognise who their top stars are. So they have patience for the trainees, you know, at academy shows. And they appreciate effort and they appreciate taking risks, whether they pay off or not. I've taken risks that have not paid off, but the audience have still applauded my efforts. They didn't like it, they hated it, they thought it sucked, <laughs> but they still appreciated the risk. Um, and then I've taken risks that have paid off majorly. So the one thing that we've got, which we hold proud, is, is the audience is, is super, super supportive in regards to what we're doing. Now, I don't know if you know this, John, but there's so many wrestlers that you won't know have come from PTW or at least, you know, entered. There was, uh, Ma uh, there was Mastiff. Yeah. Um, mm. There was... Uh, I've seen Mastiff. Well. Yeah. When we went, yeah. that uh, the one we went to see, Scott to what he was on. That. I remember seeing yeah. Mastiff. Um, th there's actually so many wrestlers that have now in NXT that have come from PCW that you just kind of forget about that was you know that was at PCW yeah it's it's a platform it's just a huge platform of opportunity and again what the one thing that's great about PCW and obviously the guys in charge is they are very very happy to give opportunity but if you're going to run with it you know, they don't want to just give opportunity. How many get people want to be wrestlers? How many people want mm. that show or want that spot? Mm. Uh, you're willing to put the work in and you're willing to obviously do your thing and obviously be sensible, have a good attitude. You're going to get these opportunities. And, and that's what PCW presents. And obviously you've seen the platform that people can achieve from yeah. PCW. How do they feel about... Uh like NXT UK, do you see it as it's putting the spotlight on British wrestling as a whole? Or are you worried that they're going to get all the best players and you're going How to struggle after that? How do I feel, sorry, or the company feels? You or what's the general consensus? Um, I can't really speak on behalf of the company, but I think it's down to the individual. So I think if an individual's goal is to get to that platform and level, I think mm. it's obviously better because you're going to get that exposure. Um, but I, it just depends um, on the individual's goals and the individual mindset. Uh, I'd say overall it's put more eyes on us. But yeah, we are at that yeah. risk of, obviously, PCW lost a lot of talent. Uh, a lot of other companies lost a lot of talent because they progressed. But you can never deny anybody in what their goals are. If someone's being taken by WWE and they want that, you can't deny them of that. That's their dream. That's their goal. So I think it's better overall. Well, I suppose on the flip side, wrestlers who have been released from NXT go down to the independent scene. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't see it as going down. Uh, I wouldn't see it as a relegation in any respect. <laughs> no, no, yeah. So that's probably I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but no, I think it's again, it's great. I think you need the perfect blend. I'm not an expert. I'm, I'm a year into my career, guys. You know, but <laughs> I think it's an important. You need a blend on the card. You need, you know, say the people that are going to sell tickets for different perspective. Whether you're a local hometown hero, or you're a guy that's been on these platforms like NXT and WWE, then you get your your comedy character. You get with wrestling, you get everything from comedy to serious to legit. I think it's important to have that that full blend of everything. So, um, yeah, I, I have no problem welcoming that. If anything, it's better competition for me, and it's it's more fun for me because it's I like swimming with sharks. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you state you're a rookie. Um, I am. Who is who is like? Is, is any big wrestlers that you've wrestled with um, that you've just been like, how am I wrestling this person? My, my singles debut on the main roster was Joe Hendry. And I remember, kind of remember, I can't be careful my words here because I, I was using very bad language. <laughs> <laughs> but I got a message um, from PCW saying, hey, what are you up to on, I think it's Friday. And I was telling, and this was the truth, I wasn't after brownie points. I said, I've actually got a ticket to the show. And then they said, okay. do you want a match? And I genuinely 100% believe they were taking the mickey out of me. <laughs> so <laughs> I said back some uh, bad words. <laughs> saying yeah whatever okay cool carried on my day and then I realised no the serious so I was like of course I want because this was at Blackwood Tower as well so this was bucket list number one I'm on the main roster uh, I've got a singles match and it's my hometown Blackwood Tower so it's like achievements unlocked left right and centre uh, then he texted me it was going to be Joe Hendry and I was just like wow okay um, what, what do I do <laughs> 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 so obviously my whole family know who Joe Hendry is. My brother was a big fan. So that was uh, the first major. But even in the Rumble, guys, I was in the Rumble with Tel Bannon, with Danny Hope, Matt Brooks. Oh, I can go on all day. And I love Danny Hope. Yeah, I'm a huge He's fan. He's so of good. Him. Idols become rivals. I've always been a huge fan of Danny Hope. <laughs> it's crazy. I've gone on to wrestle Sheikh El Sham. Uh, Big T, just name dropping them all. I've I've been in the ring very early on with some some very very talented and hardworking individuals, whether they're already established or on the way up. Mm. So you've mentioned Blackpool. Let's, yes. let's bring it up. I'll so you've it up. wrestled um, at the Blackpool Tower, which is just which is amazing. Yes. Um, and I don't know if you've seen if anyone's seen a, a show at the Tower. But a wrestling shot at the tower is just so fun. It's it's the atmosphere, guys. It's the prestige mm. of the arena, isn't it? And yeah. obviously, you guys have been to shows at the tower. Um, it's just, so, especially to us, it's more special to us because it is our home and we're obviously passionate about Blackpool. But the tower just, it's just above all else. Any, again, I, I've always described it as my medicine square garden. It's my WrestleMania. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I can compete in an arena as prestigious as that. To me personally, it's it's just amazing. Me and uh, John <laughs> actually worked at the tower, didn't we, for a couple of years? Yeah, yeah. That's where we met each other. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, it was all, all downhill from there. What were you doing? Uh, it's just general. <laughs> so, uh, well, I, I was working. There was a food place on like the fifth floor. That's where I've started and then we we met on like the 4d cinema didn't we yeah um, so john's a chef so he's been a burger <laughs> in the burger kitchen and i just come in and steal the food <laughs> <laughs> yeah so guys i'm gonna that's an easy sell for me to get you get down to the next blackpool tower show you can go back to the place you met have a good show <laughs> yeah <laughs> well um ironically my my brother is a manager at the tower so I could uh, hopefully, but you know, sort us out. We'll get, we'll get some uh, <laughs> filming, uh, fil filming rights. Hey, yeah, <laughs> do what you got to do, guys. You know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, no, Blackpool Tower is special. It's, it's special. Um, I mean, Blackpool, Blackpool's just a, a famous town anyway for wrestling, isn't it? It's just a wrestling town. Yeah. Uh, well, like you said, obviously the, the name that's you know what name I'm going to say right now, William Regal. Uh, mm. Of course, um, but there's other big names and that have come to this town. We've got venues. We've got uh, not just Blackpool Tower, but you've got the Winter Gardens and, and other show bars and things. So we've got plenty of venues. And like you said, it's just that town. It's that, what do you call it? Las Vegas. 
Las, Las Vegas, Vegas in the north. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Las Vegas in the north. <laughs> I was trying to find the words. So, go on, John. What you say? I was just going to say what you said, basically. <laughs> uh, did you ever see any wrestling in Blackpool when you were younger? Because it used to be I on like, the Pleasure Beach and stuff like that, didn't it? Mm. This is where it goes, like, again, like, how Blackpool Tower is special, because my first ever wrestling show was Blackpool Tower as a kid, and mm. it was... I, I couldn't tell you what it was, to be honest. I think it was just silly names, and it, I don't know what company or what it was, but Jake the Snake Roberts was actually wrestling. And oh, really? There was a bit of buzz around town, but again, this was before I even enjoyed wrestling. It was just something for me and my dad to do. And But I remember watching it, I thought, it's pretty cool, it's pretty quirky a bit over the top bit banana <laughs> it was cool so to go from watching that to then being a part of a Blackpool Tower show is it's just all full circle and it's just so surreal who who did you like when you were growing up wrestling wise who was your sort of idols uh, I, I, st I didn't watch the Attitude Era as a kid I started, yeah. I know, I know, I, I started <laughs> way later, so I started watching in 2002. Right. So this was, the standouts for me was Lesnar, um, Rey Mysterio, uh, Kurt Angles, so it was more them type of guys. Uh, Lesnar and the Angles, because they were more, in my eyes, more legit. Mm. You know, they're, they're very believable. So I'd, I'd have to pin it on Brock Lesnar. And then over the years, and still to this day, I'm a very, very huge John Cena fan. Whether, uh, I don't know whether you guys can say what you want about that, but I'm a very, very big John Cena fan. I think I can appreciate him. I don't know if yeah. I was yeah. his biggest fan at the time. But we just said this a couple of weeks ago. We kind of missing him because as much as we don't like him, he was that sort of star draw, yeah. wasn't we, yeah. we just like him because he was winning everything, but... <laughs> there was no other kind of big names around that time. He was kind of holding the company, weren't he? I suppose. He was the one, yeah, he was the one and only at the time. And another thing as well, people kind of dismiss Pop Lesnar, but back in the day, especially him and Kurt Angle, his matches, one, were longer than a minute. And mm. they were so good, his matches, weren't they? Back in, when, like, get him and Kurt Angle. Yeah, I'd say as good as he is and as appreciated as he is, Lesnar's still very underrated. He's, yeah. I, I, again, I'm not an expert, but I think him as one of the best of all time. Um, you know, people watch his matches. You don't blink, you don't go to the toilet. You watch his matches and you are yeah. captivated by what he's doing and he does it so, so well. Um, I think there was a match, was it him, Rollins and Cena or something, like a triple threat? You were just completely captivated. He was like the last boss of a video game. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though he's still the top draw, I still think he's severely underrated. Yeah, I mean, him in the octagon was just insane. Like <laughs> them, them. Uh, what are they called? Hammer, hammer fists. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I wouldn't fight the guy. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. Um, um, so, go on, John. Go on. Is there anyone you take inspiration from when you trying to come up with your own sort of wrestling persona? So I'll, just... I'll answer the question. That I'll, I'll, in terms of taking inspiration, in terms of life and whatever, I'll answer that first. And then in terms of obviously the wrestling, if I try and blend it into my character, if you will. But I take inspiration from everybody, um, no matter what, because I always find something to be inspired by. And in terms of inspiration, it's going to be hard to explain, but it, it, I'm trying to get the right message out there in terms <laughs> of, if I, I, if I do 100 push-ups, for example, right now, that's pretty impressive, but it's not inspiring to me as opposed to someone that has never done a push-up and struggles to do one because it's expected that I can do it and this guy's trying something new. So I'm inspired more by people that try new things, go out of their comfort zone, uh, for example, let's say, I don't know, you're a fantastic uh, runner and you decide to, you know, do MMA. It's people stepping out of the comfort zone, people trying. I'm inspired by people that aren't in great shape, that try and make an effort and try and improve more than I am by someone that can do a million sit-ups in, you know, two mm. minutes. But that's the type of thing I take inspiration from. People that try and adapt, try and overcome and try and improve themselves. 
Um, but I take inspiration from absolutely anybody, from CM Punk stepping into the ring, um, to some person that's never done a push-up attempting. But to answer your question properly, <laughs> that's not what you even asked. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was, because I was in panic mode about, because the white collar was only eight weeks, so it's eight weeks to get a persona and see where you're at. Um, there was talks of me being a bit not so nice, but I think we've gone down the right path because it's it's just me times ten. You know what I mean? I can just expand myself in real life. I can send good messages. Um, I can get different eyes from different worlds, i.e. your judo uh, and different platforms to watch your stuff. Um, big one is John Cena. I just love, again, what he stands for and what he portrays. And everything he tries to portray has a message, a positive message. So I try and take inspiration from that. Uh, in terms of British wrestling, I take inspiration from everybody, from uh, everybody on the PCW roster to new people that I meet. I'll take a little bit of inspiration. In terms of blending my character, I'd like to say... And this is this is going to be very ambitious, so this is going to get a lot of hate. But I'd say, <laughs> I'd love to say Lesnar and Cena bang into one. Um, a positive outlook, a positive perspective, always seeing the good in people, and that's genuine. Uh, but also a legit competitor and a, a legit athlete, if you will, in that regard. Um, but yeah, that's more or less it. This is sort of a good segue. Um... Your inspiration is also kind of um, video games and uh, that kind of thing, because I've noticed, especially when you came out to, it came out in the Black Bull Tower, you've kind of, you had the kind of Street Fighter kind of look. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, <laughs> it looked, it looks really cool. Um, awesome. And then you have the the is it U uh, Ugo, Ugo. Ugo. Is it, yeah. Where was the Ugo? No, is that not um, on your on your YouTube channel? Oh, no, Dragon no, Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. No, no, no. Um, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Yes. Oh, I love yeah. Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Now I know what you're talking. No, I love Dragon Ball Z. Um, it's just madness, isn't it? The training that they do because it's the. <laughs> but no, um, it's not really video games and such as that, the Street Fighter wasn't the intention, to be honest. Um, I just wanted to wear my judo suit or judo gi, but I wanted it to look cool, so I cut the sleeves off. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it was. So there was no intention to look like Ryu, even though I have nothing against that, the comparison. <laughs> but it was, I wanted to wear my judo stuff. It kind of started where I, I'd wear the belt to the ring, and then on the next Blackpool show, I think I just wore the jacket and the belt. And then on the big show that I did last year, it was everything. So it's kind of just adding a bit more, a bit more. But yeah, no, that wasn't the intention. It was just to make it look a bit more uh, presentable to the wrestling world by cutting the <laughs> off. I think the judo community went a bit bananas when we saw that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with them training videos that you've done, the Dragon Ball Z one, and I think I've seen the Rocky one as well. Uh, how were they making them, and what gave you that idea to do that? And which was uh, the hardest? Uh, did you appreciate them? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did. Like when uh, when the woman ran you over, that was quite painful. Yeah, to be honest, I. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah, so YouTube brand new to me. I've only had the channel for three weeks. And we've got storyboards or we're storyboarding ideas for all sorts of things. But we're kind of not putting it all out because we want to see what works and what doesn't. But YouTube, again, everything that I do is by accident, guys. Um, the plan was, this was before lockdown, was for me to do like, a, is it a video log or a, a vlog of mm. my character? Or it was kind of me anyway how I prepare for a wrestling event in terms of training. But I was just going to use YouTube as the platform just to put it on there so it's easy to share. Um, we were going to do it and then lockdown happened. So the guy that was going to help film, you know, it just didn't go to, to fruition, if you will. Then I was thinking of an idea again. If you look all over my Instagram and it's kind of cliched and repetitive, but 
the message is always the same though it's i want to inspire i want to motivate and i want to entertain as many people as i can but from different perspectives whether it's judo coaching fitness wrestling and now using the platform of youtube so i'm launching a project in the summer that i'm hoping will reach out to as many as we can and it's everything i just said along with encouraging people to step out of their comfort zone and just be courageous and um, and it basically comes down to when was the last time you tried something for the first time um i was thinking well mine was wrestling and now it's youtube but I understood that I think this could really reach a lot of people that I didn't want to just launch it with no subscribers. <laughs> so I thought I'll just make a load of quirky videos, you know, entertain people that are struggling in lockdown at my expense, as you've seen in the Rocky video. Nearly. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, have you seen the Cobra Kai one? Yeah. Yeah, I watched that as well. <laughs> 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 that's where i just left my dignity right there um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. a bit embarrassing but it's at my expense just to entertain people but i'm trying to build an audience my goal is and congratulations to you guys by the way you've got a thousand followers now on youtube so which mm. is huge yeah. um, huge so that's my goal and then i want to release this summer project and reach out to a fair few people if you will so youtube kind of happened by accident but I want to combine things where people will get value from, but things that I'm going to enjoy. Uh, and I have so much respect for people that edit and people that film because I've had so much coffee and sleepless nights this year. <laughs> well, you see, John does the editing. I, yeah, I'm not about that. Yeah. I'll stick <laughs> to so media. much respect for you then, pal, because editing is, is insane. It's I know. Like eight and a half hours to the Dragon Ball Z one. Uh, I can imagine. Well, the editing on it looks really good. I'd I'm not that advanced, I don't think, but yeah, it's, 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 it's tough old, it, you think it's quite an easy job, but when you're doing it, it's it's a long old job of doing it, isn't it? I had to learn it all, man. I didn't even know I had to work <laughs> the camera, so it was, <laughs> when Christmas was out the way, it was getting up dead early, learning how to do all that, storyboarding, getting ideas, but I'm glad you guys took a bit of entertainment from it and you know, had a bit of a giggle, um, and that's what it was all about, really. <laughs> So on your YouTube channel, you do uh, your fitness, which I'll get into in a minute, but I thought I can't interview you without doing... So I did the animal movements. Okay. Um, now, at first I was like, oh, God, what am I doing? But, so you do like a chimpanzee, the frog, uh, the dolphin, the dolphin flips, I believe I think I did. So I did dolphin. all of them. Oh, you, you attempted it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, I did the no way! Oh, you, yeah. oh, did you get a film? Um, what, sorry? Did you get a video film? No, because I, I, <laughs> I, did, I didn't have much space in my front room, so I kind of did these chimpanzee yeah, movements. Yeah. And um, Oh, wow. Oh, I'm going to stop um, you there, because that's what it was about. I'm glad someone has seen that video and gone, I'm going to give this a go. So, oh, you just made my day. That's amazing. Well, I'm getting I'm getting married in September, so I need to, I'm trying to get rid of my dad, Bob. Right, so you know, um, but they hurt my my calf so much like you think because it looks quite simple to do you kind of yeah. you know on all fours just doing kind of doing the movements of animals yeah. but yeah it hurts it's tough isn't it? it hurts and yeah. the, i think i only listed five i can go on all day there's oh my goodness me just uh, lizard walks uh horse donkey you name an animal and we've got a movement for it <laughs> they were just five because we filmed in bulk so we were filming these videos like back to back in the same day. So I was exhausted. Um, but my favourite one is the chimpanzee, the monkey walks. I love the rhythm, the flow and the... Yeah. Yeah, I love, I'm fascinated by movement. Have you um, watched... I mean, how do you feel about DDP? Because um, my friend is does DDP yoga and um, I've done a little bit of it. His programme is unbelievable. And if you've watched the documentary Relentless it's so inspiring like he's just such a guy i it was emotional wasn't it if, you know, yeah i know what you were talking about it was so emotional but in such a great way where it's like it, again i i speak in like quotes just because i'm terrible at explaining but that's the classic example of if you want something bad enough you'll find a way and mm. that guy wanted to you know sort his life out and he found a way and i've i've followed ddp yoga and i'm actually qualified in yoga as well um, yeah. because of how I enjoyed the DDP perspective where it wasn't 
his what's his tagline? It's not your mama's yoga. Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> it's just perfect. So it kind of inspired me to dive into a bit of yoga, and I, I'm fascinated with your animal and primal movements. So I blended them both, where I can get a good, decent mobility session, if you will, for myself or for clients or for whatever. But the animal movements are, are fun. Yeah, um, just to clarify, so it's uh, Goodwin Fitness Coaching. Yes, is that correct? So, yeah, it is. Yeah. Goodwin fit yeah, yeah. coach, fitness coaching, whatever perspective. Yeah. Um, so, do you, so you do, do you do classes? Do you have your own um, kind of um, space that you do your classes and teach? And Yeah, so I've got the, the judo club. We've got two judo clubs. We've got one in Blackpool, which has been there since 1942. Uh, oh, wow. Beautiful building. It's stunning. It's like traditional Victorian, but now more modernised. And Where then, else is that? Sorry. That is in the Revo area. Okay. So from the outside in, you wouldn't even think it existed, but as soon as you walk, I might even, I might even just like get on my phone tomorrow and just like show people, if you know what I mean? Just do a live yeah, video or something. My yeah. mum lives near football ground. And I know where, but I can't think where, I mean, I don't think I've ever, I might have seen it, but I've never even noticed it's there. Yeah, exactly. From the outside in, you won't have a clue. But once you're in, okay. you're gonna, um, I'll do. A, if I remember, I'll do a video tomorrow showing everybody on Instagram what our yeah, building yeah. is. It's, it's a very beautiful building. Um, then I opened up, oh gosh, five years ago, our another judo club in St. Anne's uh, with the same name. So it's the same club, basically, but we have one in Blackpool, one in St. Anne's, just to extend our reach. Mm -hmm. But I have, but St. Anne's is pretty much 100% mine. But I treat it as it's everybody's club. Everybody has it. Can't just be my perspective, else it wouldn't work. Um, but yeah, the fitness is we have a private studio with that, and I'm very proud of that. And I'm not, I'm not bitching on what fitness is becoming. But gym-based stuff is people put the best makeup on, their best clothes on, and go take videos in the gym, which yeah. causes a lot. Of, you know, people that are new in the gym environment, so. I'm very proud that now our private studio can offer that little haven, if you will, for people that are new to fitness, that don't have to worry about, you know, that side of, you know, the fitness world, if you will. They can come in at their own pace with their own progressions. Uh, even they can put their favourite music on as well. It's a nice, lovely atmosphere and they can achieve what they need to achieve. Have you, um, do you know R.P. Davis? I do, I know where I am, yeah. yeah. Good luck. Because he's got a gym. Have you had any conversations with him uh, about, you know, opening his gym and, you know, any kind of tips? Is it, have I given him any tips? Well, <laughs> or each other, just helps each other because, you know, you both got a gym. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool because we kind of started our wrestling careers at the same time. So obviously mm. he's got a very, very prestigious boxing background. We think he's like 12 professional wins as well, which is absolutely mm. insane. And I've done quite well in judo. Uh, obviously, both local lads. If you do well in a sport, you kind of get a bit of a good reputation around town. He's actually a lovely lad as well as you guys know because you've interviewed him. And again, mm. he's sound. But no, I've been to his gym. Uh, I've been to his gym. Uh, really nice guy. We'll probably do a few things in the future where I get him down to mine, do a bit of judo or something. Yeah. But yeah, no, he's a good lad. We support each other on social media and I wish him well because he's, you know, he's a good lad and he's, you know, making waves in wrestling, which is good to see. Again, Blackpool lads really <laughs> doing well and absolutely smashing stuff. Mm. What's your, um, do you have like a goal set where you want to head in wrestling? I do. Um, and this goes back to PCW offering opportunities that are match. So this is embarrassing, by the way. I was <laughs> in lockdown longer than my entire professional wrestling career. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would, <laughs> no, yeah, well, so I've only been on the main roster for a year. Right. So Road to Glory 2019, I was helping out backstage. And Road to Glory 2020, I was very fortunate I was in the main event. So that was pretty, a mad rush. Uh, just one year of just non-stop crazy opportunity and mad rush. Um but in terms of goals, I had goals that PCW have I've already achieved and I didn't expect to in that short time. So there was goals like just get on the main roster. That was a goal which I didn't expect yeah. to happen that soon. 
uh, wrestle a singles match, uh, have a main event. Uh, thanks to PCW, I've had four. Uh, wrestle at Blackpool Tower, main event Blackpool Tower. Again, these are things that I didn't expect to happen within a year. I just think, you know, I had a, a, a timeline, if you will. Um, so every single goal that I originally set out apart from one, I've achieved within the year. And that's thanks to, again, the supportive atmosphere that we have, the peers that we have, and the guys, say, that have been around longer than me, giving, you know, the younger guys that role than, you know, just giving us the opportunity. So in terms of goals, um, I'm very fortunate to achieve what I wanted to achieve apart from one. And then when that's achieved, I'll reevaluate, take a deep breath and just say, OK, where do I want to go from here? And how do I want to, more importantly, give back, give back to the audience and give back to you know, other wrestlers. Depends on how long, obviously, that goal's achieved. What's that goal? Can you guess? The <laughs> uh, champion? I want to be PCW World Champion, yeah. Um, I've had it... Oh, yeah, my... <laughs> I was looking for my phone and it's right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I've had... Um... Yeah, I respect that I've got a long way to go. So I'm not just saying, yes, I want to be champion and I'm demanding. I respect that. Again, I'm still a new kid. I've got a long way to go with a lot to learn. But at the end of the day, it is a goal of mine. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, but it is still waking up every day. I've got a picture of the belt um, on my bookshelf there. And it's actually been my screensaver for two years now, uh, the PC oh, okay. time. I want to see it every day and I respect who's held it. So I respect that I've got a lot more work to do before I can even come close to experience that. Uh, very fortunate to have a black belt in judo, but the only coloured belt I don't have is gold. So I'm going to work through <laughs> hard. And when my time comes, whether it's a year or a decade, um, you'll know I'll bring that belt back to Blackpool, guys. <laughs> um, just going back to your fitness just for a minute, um, You've actually won a couple of awards for your fitness as well for your gym. You won Five Coast Coach of the Year. Yes. And then, Lan was it Lancashire Coach? Yes, the regional, yeah, Lancashire, uh, Lan wow. yeah, Lancashire Coach of the Year, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, it's quite impressive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, it's all happened within, it's just happened fast. Like, it feels like, I think 2019 and then 2020, everything just paid off. But this was behind years and years of just hard work with no recognition. And then suddenly it's, but it's just like a catalyst now. Everything's just coming at once. Yeah. You know, main roster, then the coach of the year, then your own judo club, then your students in the club doing fantastic and achieving things that I can only have dreamt of at that age. So, yeah, I got the final coach of the year uh, was awesome. But then the Lancashire coach of the year was a huge shock. Like genuine, I wasn't even going to go. Uh, I was nominated, and I just thought, I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm not going to go. What's the point? And the only reason I went because I thought it would be great for our judo club social media that we were <laughs> nominated for an award, and then we ended up winning it, which was absolutely surreal. Um, but the speech I gave because I didn't know I had to do a speech, um, <laughs> which I'm kind of glad because it was more natural. Was you can't be a great coach without a great team. So it was a shared award and I was very, very happy to bring it back to the club and say, this is not coach of the year. This is, you know, us. This is a team. Mm. This is coach of the year. But we've been very proud and, you know, we've been recognised. We've got club of the year as well in 2018, uh, community sports club. We've got file coach, Lancashire coach. I think we've got, we've got young achiever of the year as well. One of our lads got young achiever. And we've just been very fortunate, to be honest, that yeah. finally, after all these years, we just got the recognition. Um, one thing that I've really, because I've been a very young coach in judo, uh, one of the youngest coaches in the Northwest as well for judo in particular, it was just nice to get that recognition. Like, I'm not just a naive kid that, you know, mm. is coaching for fun. I genuinely am passionate and I believe I know I can get people to the level that they want. So I appreciate you you're recognising that and I appreciate you bringing it up because uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, it's kind of weird just hearing it from someone else. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Do you think you'd ever uh, train people to wrestle once you have enough experience? Oh, I've would you be interested? In I would definitely be interested because um, as I said, I don't compete no more. So I'll never 
boxing was just for fun. I'll never box again. MMA was for fun. I'll never do that again. And judo and that piece, I never want to compete again. Mm. So I want to coach, but it's all about giving back. I want to help people. I believe as a coach in terms of mindset and whatever, I'll be very, very suitable in the world of wrestling. But in terms of pure wrestling, I've obviously not got enough experience. So it's just an experience issue. I'd say when I've got a bit more experience from an ego perspective, I wouldn't coach anymore anytime soon because I've still got goals I want to achieve. Mm. So in judo, I'm a full on coach and I'll give my time to anybody that wants it. Wrestling, I've got to be a bit selfish if a coaching opportunity came. I've still got a long way to go, guys. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got a lot to learn. In. The more you see, the less you know with wrestling. It's, it's very, very strange how I went from white collar and then suddenly it, it's completely different. Mm. Yeah. So to answer your question, I'd say I don't know. Um, I'd say I'd make a very suitable coach uh, in, as a coach. But in terms of wrestling, again, it's the experience. How do you feel about giving promos? <laughs> oh, man. Nothing makes me more nervous. <laughs> uh, again, I'd say that I've got a lot to learn and I've just got to practice, practice, practice. The YouTube's helping because um, you'll see in the videos, we filmed in bulk, so you won't see it anytime soon, but you'll see, especially the Dragon Ball Z one, I was not confident at all speaking. And then you'll see one hopefully in a couple of weeks where I've just gotten a little bit better than a lot of my promos, especially my last one where uh, at the Blackpool Tower, they just handed me the mic and said, speak. That's better mm. for me because it's more natural. I'm a bit goofy and I always say the wrong thing, but it always translates well. So I prefer someone just to say, here's the mic, go. Yeah. Or if I have time to think and I have something specific to say, I'm all over the place. And it's... Well, I mean, I think that's proven that that doesn't work. I mean, me and John always talk about the Roman Reigns, about the tater tots. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you remember that, John? Yeah. And it's terrible. If you've got someone written for you, especially if you don't know what you're saying, there's no yeah. conviction. You just need to say it and just be honest. And all the best promos are off the cuff. Agreed. 100% agreed. And I, I feel more comfortable because then it's whether it's a good promo or a bad promo, I feel it's more real. And I didn't know I was going to cut a promo after my last match. They just handed me the mic and said, speak. And it was, again, without sounding dorky, to me, it was everything because it was a main event of Blackpool Tower and it was a big ending to a big storyline. Yeah. Again, seeing all the kids there, there was tears in the crowd. It was just <laughs> everything full circle. Everything I'd worked for just paid off in one specific moment. So I was a bit, my emotions were all over the place. I didn't know if I was happy, sad. I didn't know what I was. <laughs> so, you, when I, do you know? Sorry. Um, sorry, do you know Sam Gradwell? Have you spoken to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because his promos been... at the moment uh, are the best at NXT. He's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. Yeah, I know Sam. Obviously, being a Blackpool guy, you know, training at gyms and stuff like. He's always got. Uh, I don't know what the right word is, but he's always got time to say hello and time to speak and time to you know, give support uh, to myself and to anybody that I've seen speak to. So I don't think you can get a better representation of NXT UK than Sam, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I think he represents it superbly. I think he represents our town amazingly. Um, I'm excited, as you guys are, because you spoke to him and you know him well, that he's, he's going to do some awesome things in the next few years. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's, he's putting Blackpool back on the map wrestling-wise. And I think, yeah. well, I think Blackpool as a whole has started getting quite back to showing what people, what British wrestling is, and especially yeah. PCW. Um, so it's kind of off time. How did you come, who came up with your name, Rossi Rascal? Oh, I knew this was going to pop. <laughs> I was waiting for you to ask this, John. <laughs> <laughs> um there's, I've been back and forth between like kind of regretting it or wanting to change it, but I think obviously this last year I've understood my persona a bit better. Mm. I think it's a perfect name, to be honest. So this was in the, the White Collar Panic. Again, I had to think of a song, a name, it had to fit, <laughs> persona. I wasn't even a judo guy back then as well because I didn't want to use my judo because I wanted to learn to wrestle. So the second I started using judo was when I was starting to stand out a bit more. 
and it was silly me. I should have done this on day one. Mm. But the name, I'm going to give you loads of different things because I don't think it's just one specific thing. Um, I didn't want it to be a real sounding name. So I wanted it, you know, obviously, but still kind of close. Right. So you've got like, I don't know, Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's not real, but it kind of is, you know what I mean? So I think I was listening to a lot of Dizzy Rascal at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Rossi bit was always in my head. Rossi T, Rossi G, Rossi something. All my friends used to call me Rossi anyway. So that was in my head. The Dizzy Rascal. And then I think what kind of put a cap on it was I met the guy that created the Beano magazine. So <laughs> it was the whole Dennis the Menace, Rossi the Rascal. It was all that. <laughs> so I kind of just ran with it and thought, this is what we got. I've kind of thought, shall I just change it to just Rascal? But I think in terms of being, again, the audience that I want to attract is obviously everybody, but my character more specifically is with the kids. I think it's a very kid-friendly name, um, and it just rolls off the tongue. So, yeah, mixed between Dizzy Rascal and Dennis the Menace. <laughs> <laughs> Are you never tempted to come out to Dizzy Rascal as your theme? I've got to be careful with my wording. So I wanted, uh, I know what you're thinking, just the Rascal uh, by Dizzy Rascal. Uh, it was already taken, and I can't use that theme. Um, right. But the song, do you know what I'm on about, don't you? Just the Rascal. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, that's the song I was listening to at the time, but it's been taken, and yeah, there's no chance of me being allowed to use that. Uh, but it would have been cool, right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> What's the, um, uh, the Dizzy Rascal song with uh, Holiday? Holiday is. Yeah, um, that is a belting tune. You need to come out to that. <laughs> my favourite <laughs> one was Love This Town, because I always think of, again, Blackpool when I, when I think of that. but yeah, I don't really listen to Dizzy Rascal a lot anymore, but at the time I was just absolutely hammering his album. Mm. So, in fact, my finishing move is called the Dizzy Rascal. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, what is your finishing move? How did you come up with what it would kind of move it would be? It's down to the coaches as well. So I was... So my signatures, if you will, is all judo. Uh, if you watch any of my matches, I don't really wrestle. I just do judo. Uh, right. <laughs> when I first started, it was down to kind of panic. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing, but I know how to throw someone safely and make it look amazing. So I just used to throw people and say, sorry, I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, But they were safe. They were cool with it. And it looks kind of legit. So everything's judo, but the finishing move, we wanted it to make it a bit more spectacular. So... It's kind of like a Shelton Benjamin T-Bone suplex. Uh, right. But as I said, with, with a doctor that called it the Dizzy Rascal. And I've actually seen it done in judo at the internationals as well. And picking someone up and then switching like that is, is really <laughs> cool. So it's kind mm -hmm. of half judo, half wrestling. And that's down to the coaches at the academy. They always go home and just constantly think about how they can improve the team. So again, unselfishly, they don't switch off. They'll coach us. They'll go home and they'll go, got an idea for Rascal. Got an idea for this guy. And then mm. we'll, we'll try it. I've not been able to use the, my finishing move a lot in my last few matches because I was in a feud with uh, Big T and there was no way I'm picking, you know, a man. <laughs> yeah. There was no way. There was no way. Every time I attempted it, bang, elbow to the head. I, it wasn't happening. John, you know what we need? We need a... Um... A match between R.P. Davis and Rossi Rascal. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be quite good, wouldn't it? Boxer yeah, yeah, that would be good. Judo champ. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> give it a few more, maybe end of the year or so. And, uh, we'll yeah, see. Um, without giving too much away, uh, there's obviously whispers here and there, but it, it's it's one of them where it has to work and it starts after a line. Yeah, uh, Arthur mm. Davis is doing great things and he's signing for other companies, you know, here and there to try and, you know, get that. I'm doing my thing in PCW. For that to work, it the stars would have to align. Mm. I don't think it would work as a programme, especially with him being a face and me being a face and us genuinely, no matter who we were in Blackpool, we'd get, you know, a good reception either way, no matter what our role is. But I think that would have to happen again on, on a big platform uh, in Blackpool, obviously, but 
in all honesty, I don't want to, you know, blow the wind out of the sails. It's quite unlikely, but there's still obviously that, you know, one of the best boxers the Northwest area has ever seen against one of the best judo players the Northwest has ever seen. <laughs> but I mean, it's, like, say, you, you, so, you just never know what might happen. You may turn heel, become <laughs> champion. <laughs> I mean, not seeing all them pictures with my with the kids. I don't think I can. Uh, mm. I don't think I have it in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? Is it not something that appeals to you, turning heel then? Or do you just not think you'd pull it off? Because it's quite, it's quite hard, isn't it, to be healing, especially yeah. if you're such a baby face moving to that. I think for the messages that I'm trying to get across on every platform that I'm doing, the timing's not right. But I. It might not ever be right, to be honest, but if it does ever happen, I've got a very, very, in my head, I could be wrong, because again, I'm still new to the psychology and mm. stuff, but I believe there's a very smart way to do it. Um, and if the time comes, then we'll obviously, I'll get advice on it and whatever, but I think there's a very, very smart way to do that. But I know it won't happen for, mm. for a couple of years at least, to be honest, guys. I think... We need, especially at coming out of, you know, the year that the world's had and people have been struggling, we need someone that, again, is genuine about helping others and it's a good yeah. positive message. So we need that person there to, you know, just to keep everybody positive. So I'll be fitting in this role for a number of years. So the heel... I mean, J John Cena never sent heel. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was to John Cena. No. <laughs> um, but no, I think... If I was to ever turn heel, it would be specifically to give back to a up and coming baby face. Mm. So I think yeah. I will achieve everything that's needed as a face. And I'd only turn heel to get the next star over, if you will, who's an up and coming baby face. I think that was the way I'd want to do it. Yeah. If I was to to do that. Um well, yeah, if, if I say if I turn heel tomorrow, I'd have to close the judo club, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> All the kids I, all abandoned me. I think it's the, like you said, it's the right time to be a baby fish because it's what everyone's probably wanting is a bit of positivity. Yeah. I don't think it's impossible. If you think of the likes of like Bailey and WWE, you never thought she would have turned heel because like she was a big hit with the kids as well. But it can be done in the right way, like you said. But that's that's what you need, that shock value. So you need to get to a level where it's impossible to turn him heel, and then you turn him heel. Mm. So it's like, he, he can never even turn heel and then bang. So that's mm. like Bailey, you never ever would think it's, she's just too good as a face. Mm. That's, that's the you, time to pull the trigger. Will <laughs> you be watching the greatest pay-per-view of the year on Sunday? Fast lane? <laughs> <laughs> um, I might upset a few people, but no, I, I'm not. Um... <laughs> No, I'll, I'll watch WrestleMania, um, but that's as far as I, I watch, to be honest. Um, I'm not really up to date with it in that perspective. I, I'm a big, big fan of British wrestling, guys. I will watch wrestling to study it. I will get ideas and inspiration. Or if the coaches say, check out this guy and look at his intensity or look at the psychology, I'll check it out. But now nah, I'm not watching it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, though, people kind of a bit shocked that people don't watch, you know, like... Um, WrestleMania or, you know, the, the big league. But there's actually yeah. so many promotions that you can watch of British wrestling. You know, there's WAW, uh, there's PCW, you know, there's... So, yeah, I don't blame you. Like, there's enough UK good wrestling out there to, to kind of fill your boots. 100%. And I think it's important for me as well, whether I'm doing the right thing or not, I like watching the people that are on our roster so I can make it not easier on myself, but I can understand where they're coming from and their style to make it a much more captivating match if I'm to ever be paired with them. Um, as I've wrestled, again, like I said, I've been in there with Joe Hendry, but he was kind enough to let me kind of dictate the match. So it was just your very, very basic of the basic just to keep me comfortable. Mm. So there's so many matches I've had. Again, I've been in there with Tal Bannon, but it was just, he was again kind enough to let me go at my pace. So I'd love to get back in there with Tell with the experience I've got now, which probably still isn't a lot. And then I'd love to do it again in five years where I've got even more. So I'd, I'd love to run it back in that perspective. So I've just been watching more our own product or mm. surrounding products, if you will. Yeah. Do you know when your next match is going to be? Oh, I 
I've got the date wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> 23rd of July. Um, we're hosting a PCW Academy show, but it'll be the first Academy show held at the Riva Show Bar. So it's going to give our trainees, including myself, I'm still a trainee, um, that opportunity to, again, just get back into a ring in front of an audience. The cool thing about this is we're giving the, the supporters the opportunity to take photos, to uh, walk a wrestler to the ring, obviously to provide an everything sound by then. Um, and it's just going to be a good atmosphere in terms of we are back, we are happy, we can smile. But I think at the top of my head, so far announced, uh, the first main show back is 13th of August, and that's Blackpool Tower. So I will be fighting in cool. my backside up to get a, be a part of that show. <laughs> um, and I'll be yeah, getting yeah. We've got a lot of people in Blackpool, that, uh, again, especially the judo team, that are just dying to come down and watch something at Blackpool Tower. So, yes, yeah, well, so um, head, guys, 23rd of July is an academy show, just to, you know, give us some confidence. And then August 13th is your Blackpool Tower show, which I invite you guys down to. Yeah, yeah, de I'll definitely be there. Um, I know me and John are, are going to go to the 10th anniversary show on the yeah. Friday, the 10th of September. I think that's when it is. So that's yeah. at the show bar. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely be there on the 10th anniversary. That would be great. Beautiful venue as well, to be honest, guys. Beautiful venue. Um, I've, I've not actually been to this new venue. It's We only did, I think, one show before obviously everything went down. And it was just, right. again, good atmosphere good staff you know you want things like that i know it's a minor detail yeah. a very very easy to deal with venue you know very welcoming very supportive uh but yeah you'll have a ton of fun at that 10th anniversary again the things that i know already is exciting me as a fan and as a wrestler which again yeah. I'm sorry guys um <laughs> and that's the stuff i know already never mind the stuff that's going to be yeah. announced down the line so oh wow and i just want to as well underline that um the tickets are free for the Academy show? Yeah, uh, for the one on um, the 10th anniversary show. I did I not know that. Get... I'm, well, <laughs> I'm sure on the Facebook group, the tickets are free. Fair play. Um, I, I, I don't have Facebook. I'm almost sure. It, could, no, it, it, it very well could be. It's just it's just not something I knew. But if it is, then that's what an yeah. opportunity. Get your tickets yeah. quick. That'll be a hell of a show. <laughs> Might have to get one myself. <laughs> um, is, who would you like to wrestle in the future is there anyone in particular yeah oh man I'd even want like I said I want to run it back with people I've already wrestled because I believe I can give them a better match now or at least you know just not your, your rookie that's a bit you know head above water type thing I'd love a programme whether it will work or not, but I think it will do wonders from a selfish perspective in terms of taking me to the next level. I think Tel Bannon can take me to the next level. I think his microphone work is second to none. I think his, his heel work is just sensational. So if you're not too familiar with Tel Bannon, I'd say check him out. Um, I think he's the guy that can take me to the next level. Uh, but as I said, he'd have his own ambitions and goal. Remember, I'm just a new kid on the block. Um, and then just because I've been a fan of British wrestling, I can list them all day. You've got your Joey Hayes, you've got your Danny Hopes. Um, I'd love to run it back with Shake as well. We had a match in Blackpool, um, but I'd love to run it back with him as well, knowing that I've got a little bit more experience under my belt. So I'd say a good programme with Tel Bannon would be awesome for me, but I'd love to wrestle, you know, your, your, let's say your British wrestling classics, your Joey Hayes, Dean Ormark, uh, Danny Hopes. Um, no one else at the top of my head, but I'm 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 happy to learn from it. Absolutely anybody I share that ring with. Well, I mean, it, it's definitely going to be an exciting year um, for PCW for yourself. Um, like I said, you're back in Blackpool um, doing a, a show as well, so that that's something to look forward to. It's definitely going to be a good year. Um, I can't wait, and hopefully, you can get your your fitness problem back on the road again. Uh, once we kind of get some normal normality, yeah, totally. We got, we got. Like I said, we're doing again. With the, again, I'm speaking quotes. It's easier. I can't explain. <laughs> um, the thing that I've, the message I've given, especially to our judo kids. Again, whether it's me in real life or the persona, we reach to a lot of kids. So, it's don't wait for opportunity. Just create it yourself. 
Uh, that's the biggest thing is, especially in wrestling as well, you never get handed an opportunity. Create it yourself. And again, if someone gives you an inch, you take a mile. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so that's been the thing. That's why YouTube's come out of nowhere. There's a few other things as well. Uh, so my April's going to be very busy. I'm away doing some unusual projects. Um, I don't think I'm allowed to announce any. No, unfortunately not. So, <laughs> you'll see them roll out on the social media. They're kind of okay. some new cool stuff again, and it's just trying to give opportunities to as many people as we can. So it's just creating your own opportunities, guys. If I can't do a fitness, I'll launch an online fitness. If I can't wrestle, I'll use this year to reflect on what I've learned and study more things and improve any way I can that isn't in ring or on shows. So it's it's using this year. If anything, this year hasn't been a rest. It's been learning wrestling from a different perspective. Um, my wrestling career was just one year of just 100 miles per hour. You're wrestling this guy. Okay, you're main event in this. You're doing well, kid. Feet on the ground. Now I finally just had a chance to stop and just take it all in. Uh, and understand, again, what my character is or the persona or the message that I'm trying to portray is, which I think I've got now. So I feel I feel even more confident when we return from a psychological perspective. Yeah, well, me and John will be keeping our eye out on your social media, but um, we'll put all your uh, details on your YouTube, you know, uh, details on our Instagram and everything. Because some of the videos um, are, are, are quite funny. They're definitely worth, worth a watch. We've got some funny ones coming. I'm actually filming tomorrow. We're filming all day tomorrow. We've got okay. that blend of uh, serious fitness ones. And then obviously once in a while you've got your, your quirky ones. So the next big one, which doesn't make any sense, guys. It, what is it? What is my life? <laughs> We're doing a Disney, a Disney Hercules one. Oh, okay. Cool. So, yeah, exactly. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> Same with you guys, obviously. Again, I'm fortunate we've got a few social media platforms. I'll put you guys on there. You know, you guys have done me a massive favour giving me this platform and, you know, speaking to me. Yeah, it's been an yeah. absolute pleasure. Well, I'll, give you, I'll give you videos to share on our channel so people can have a... Especially the pretty, Dragon Ball Z one. I'll whack it all <laughs> over the judo, the judo area and obviously the fitness world as well. But honestly, lads, I really appreciate your time and your efforts, you know, reaching out and obviously talking to me and just giving me that confidence and that platform to, to reach a few people. No, honestly, it's, it's no absolutely fine, you know. We just love talking about wrestling, so any opportunity, <laughs> me and John will jump at the uh, chance. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Look forward to that Disney Hercules video. <laughs> yeah, check it out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, exciting things coming your way. Um, definitely to keep an eye out for Roscoe, Rossi Rascal. And uh, yeah, we'll be seeing you soon. Absolutely. I appreciate the effort, guys. We'll see you at the next show, yeah? Yeah, yeah. See you in Blackpool. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Take care, guys. See you.